It is set list day. Dudes, lady dudes alike, rejoice, sort of. Not really. <laughs> uh, but this morning we got uh, the whole set list revealed for the legendary duelist Immortal Destiny, the new support pack for all of the evil anti-heroes coming not anti-heroes that's not the word i'm looking for because a lot of these aren't heroes at all uh, what do you call them uh antagonists we'll call them um in the Yu-Gi-Oh series it's always a cool set uh really the first one was probably the best one there's been some hit and misses throughout the rest of them but i think this is number five or six um you know, it is what it is. Like, I think Harpies were a hit. Some of them, like, the Machine Angel support was, like, really bad. And some, it's just hit or miss. But today we're looking at the whole set list. I've already done, um, like, news videos a long time ago uh, on the reveal of the actual new support cards. But here we're mainly just looking at the whole set as a whole and seeing if it's really worth an investment or if you should just snag some singles once it comes out. But let's jump right into it. So they're, they're in a weird order. We start with an Earthbound Immortal Kakakapu. Um, which was a pretty cool card in the end. It's my favorite looking Earthbound Immortal. Earthbound Immortals are being one of the archetypes getting support in this set, which is interesting because when you look in here, I don't know if this is if this is hype or not. Like with the new Earthbound Immortal stuff coming in soon, the, this card got hyped. But uh, we only have two printings of it. The Ultra Rare sitting at four. Well, no, way over four now. The price went up to like almost six bucks. Um, <laughs> here and then the super rare which I'm assuming is the um, original printing is already up around um, you know seven plus for a near mint copy so uh, pretty nice that it's getting a reprint either way I mean even if that's not its normal price it'll still go down and then um, even its regular price had to have been three four bucks probably something like that um, then you have the new Necrofear stuff, Curse Necrofear, Dark Spirit of Banishment, Dark Spirit of Mouse. I actually think these three cards have some you have some possibility of being decent in like a straight up fiend archetype. Could just be a solid card. Um, this card is just a big body that wipes stuff off your opponent's board. These guys are both just monsters that recur themselves a lot, which is really cool. Um, Dark Spirit's Mastery, letting you search any level 8 fiend monster. When uh, I hear that with Grinder Golem still being... Um, allowed in the OCG this card actually sees a little bit pill a little bit of play so that's pretty cool um, and then it just helps you set up your destiny board stuff same things with, with sentence of the doom just setting up destiny board stuff and getting tokens on the field I believe oh no no no, that's not that's a different card um, but yeah just setting up your destiny board stuff uh, and then for the reprints dark necro fear doom caliber knight diabound colonel um, dark sanctuary zoma the spirit and call of the Oh no, that's different. That's a different one. <laughs> uh, Zuma Spirit is a trap monster. Not not much here. Dark Sanctuary is a nice card though. Uh, we see it. It's only had one printing ever, and it's like for a near month. The first near month is at seventy seventy five, but after that, it's like immediately like eight to nine bucks. So, um, you know, it, it, it's definitely nice to see a reprint here. Definitely a crucial card if you're trying to play that anime style of this deck. Uh, you need Dark Sanctuary. Um, for that, uh, Doom Caller and I way past his time, um, super cheap, Devon Colonel way super cheap too, and a way power crept card, um, not the crazy here, Dark Necropier has already been reprinted out the booty hole. Um, then moving on to some other stuff, we have a random Earthbound Immortal card here, <laughs> activate only when your opponent declares an attack, you select, uh, the attack target, um, poop. <laughs> uh, we move on to some evil hero stuff. We have evil hero Malicious Bane. That's the new um, fusion guy. Uh, a duster, a dusted gold. We have Sinister Necrom, and we have Supreme King's Castle and Evil Mine. I think these are all the. These are the new ones. These five. Um, so one thing I'm worried about is that it's hero support. We've seen in the past. When heroes get support, if it's high rarity, this stuff will be extremely expensive. Um, like super, super expensive. Um, so we'll see. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of this stuff is like actually pretty decent. I think this guy is pretty decent. I think um, I think no oh wait, what is this? Oh yeah, I think um Supreme King's Castle is decent, and then the, both these monsters are pretty solid as well for consistency. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I just think 
be careful. It's hero stuff. You know, it's just heroes. It's one of the most fan favorite archetypes of all time. Um, so if these are higher rarity, they will probably fetch a decent price. Um, for the reprints, Malicious Edge, already cheap as dirt. Infernal Gainer, already cheap as dirt. Infernal Prodigy, already cheap as dirt. Evil Hero, Malicious Fiend, I believe, is also cheap as dirt. And then Dark Fusion and Dark Column. We kind of saw this coming. Um, this one's kind of like, um, what's it called? Not Brilliant Fusion, but Miracle Fusion, but for um, Evil Heroes. And then Dark Calling, um, also kind of like that, but a different name. Um, so uh, Dark Fusion already was pretty cheap, but uh, Dark Calling was actually already was pretty up there. I mean, it's been sitting for a near mint uh, copy. This one's like sitting around four bucks. This one's sitting around four to five bucks. This one's really low, but I think they're just motivated sellers down here. Um, but yeah, so like uh, this is a good reprint. I mean, there's nothing really much. I mean, you could have reprinted like generic f hero support, but I understand why they didn't because this is an evil hero support like set so like why reprint the other stuff i get it um then we move to the earthbound immortal stuff we've got the new line walker dawn walker and dusk walker i love the names honestly really do i think these cards are actually kind of spicy if they didn't lock you into synchro monsters these cards would actually be kind of clean um but whatever um we have geoglyph uh, ultimate earthbound immortal and then we have all the reprints here the reprints are like awful they're not awful. They just all these cards are like cheap as dirt as is. I think I don't think we're. Let me let me actually look up Raska. Let me see. Let me. Oh no. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fifty four cents. Cool. Uh yeah. So not this. This cheap as dirt. 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 So all the reprints really don't do much for you. But again, another archetype that's just like for the fan favorites with five Ds might want to pick those up so they could actually fetch a decent price. Then we have the Giga Pup gimmick puppets. They actually this and um, Evil Heroes I actually expect to be the most competitive. I don't think they're actually going to be tier one or even tier two. But as far as rogue decks go, I think both these could be viable rogue decks. For sure, Gigantes doll just stealing cards, um, I believe, right? Um, yeah, I can control both of them until the end phase. Pretty spicy. Terror Baby, a nice like um, Monster Reborn. Um, Bisque doll puts herself on the field, and this deck all like pretty much just wants to drop drop a bunch of level eights on the board. Uh, Perform Puppet. Um, I don't think this card is that good. No, it's not. Pub Parade is an interesting card, but it's slow, right? This card, this deck kind of wants to OTK a little bit, so it's slow. And then for the reprints, Dreary Doll, Magnet Doll, Destroy, Humpty Dumpty, and Puppet of Strings, unfortunately. Oh, and also Junk Puppet. Unfortunately, all six of these cards are like already, like I think the most expensive one was like Dreary Doll, and she's like a dollar and 30 cents or something. The rest of them are, are cheap as dog turds, so don't have to worry about that. Um, but, you know, who knows? Maybe it could get a nice rarity reprint because a couple of these i think were like only printed in gold secret rare which a lot of people hate um next we have predator plant stuff actually some stuff that has not been super hyped up to be like competitively good but i know there's a good amount of predator plant lovers out there so um some cool stuff here we have predator plant trifi uh, trifio veritum uh predator plant helium for um Preta Practice, uh, Preta Prime Fusion, and Preta Planning. Um, really, the main card I'm actually looking at here for interesting purposes is Preta Plant Trif Trifio uh, Vertum. Uh, the reason I'm looking at this is Super Poly is at three, and it's actually pretty spicy. Um, this card just gives you a higher ceiling for your Super Poly if your opponent is full enough to put. Uh, three monsters, three dark monsters on the field, or even if your opponent puts two and you put one, sometimes it's going in, worth going into this because this card is actually so strong. Um, so this card gains attack equal to the original attack of the monsters on the field with a predator counter. Um, 
and then you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. When your opponent special summons a monster from their extra deck while you control this fusion summon card, quick effect, you can negate that summon and destroy that monster. So negating summons is really strong. And if your opponent controls a monster with a predator plant counter, you can special summon this great card from the graveyard in defense position. Nothing crazy, the, the second effect, or really the first effect, but he's still a 3,000-3,000 monster that you can rip possibly three cards off your opponent's field, and then he negates any summon from the extra deck. So a legit Legitimate like control card once you take him um, really makes him for a high high ceiling and sometimes going into this card I play layer of darkness so I'm looking at getting like two copies of this anyway just because like with layer up your opponent just needs to put three monsters on the field period and you can make this guy and you probably win the duel from there for sure um, so he's one I would definitely want to keep my eye on and then I'll, a bunch of classic predator plant stuff uh, dross dross of Philum, hydra uh, uh, Clammy the Sundew. Uh, starting with a Fusion Dragon. I don't get this. They just reprinted this card, and it's now like 50 cents, and now we're getting another reprint of it. Whatever. Dragostapelia, even the Ultra, was it Ultra Super. I think Super. The Super Dragostapelia is like 14 cents. Don't get it. Uh, Predaponyx, Predaplast, Earthbound Revival, and Roar of the Earthbound, all I'm pretty sure cheap as poo cards. If these ones are cheap, it's because they're old. I didn't even look them up because. They're not very good anyway, so. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it here. There's nothing, uh, the reprints are like not good. Like usually we see something here and there's like, there's a couple, there's these three cards. Uh, Kakakapu, um, Dark Sanctuary, and not this one, Dark Calling. Uh, other than those though, these reprints are like, why? <laughs> like the cards are already so cheap. Um, and like commons and, and rares and like don't really need a reprint at all no reason so if you're going after this set I wouldn't really bank too much on nice reprints you know kind of helping you get value I honestly would just probably just say like pick up the singles I mean really um, when when there's a set like this where there's so many like whiffs like you get the new cards and you're like cool I got a good bunch a good bunch of new cards if you get a set if you get one and you just pull a bunch depending on the ratio you just pull a bunch of the reprints like the reprints aren't much they're not worth much to you um, so I don't I don't really think it's worth to buy the set like that I think you're better off just buying the singles waiting on it May I, as always when sets come out stuff likes to rise because of hype and right out the gate anybody who's interested is getting their hands on the product and then a bunch of products opened and then a week goes by the hype dies down and then prices dip and then you go you jump on it so that's probably my advice for this set here um kind of disappointing i mean i still think the the support is actually pretty good for a good for most of these archetypes but still i don't know guys let me know your thoughts down below let me know if, if you're picking up uh, from this set uh, and what from this set what what archetype you're interested in getting support and um yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, do it so now. And I love you. Peace.